This is the royal family, and they are 100% useless. Aside from their outrageous level of baseless self-importance or their borderline psychotic displays of pomp and circumstance, these extremely out of touch and extremely wealthy white people from the United Kingdom are racist, misogynistic pedophile apologists who only face a minute amount of accountability when they are backed into a corner. We're going to be delving into a problematic past filled with controversy, gaslighting, denial, and a whole lot of questionable involvement in some rather heinous endeavors but before we get Boy. started don't forget to like and subscribe to here and how if you haven't done so already Do you have a telephone I could use? the royal family has been rubbing people the wrong way for upwards of a thousand years you'd think that upsetting your people enough for them to cross an entire ocean start their own country and subsequently defeat you in warfare would be the benchmark of any failed monarchy but sadly the British royal family seems to have only gotten worse as time has gone on specifically over the last 90 years the almost century-long rule of Queen Elizabeth II started with a lavish wedding, a world war, and you guessed it, incest. Now, this wasn't incest in that Game of Thrones, Jamie and Cersei sense. It's not like Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip were brother and sister, but they were third cousins. They had the same great-great-grandmother in Queen Victoria. Now, this may be hard to believe based on the way Prince Charles actually looks, but marrying your third cousin should actually be okay for your gene pool. If you look back at any given monarchy, you're likely to find some level of inbreeding. Preserving royal bloodlines meant that princes and princesses only had a handful of people to choose from when it came to selecting a suitor, most of which were from other royal families. So the family tree of the British monarchy is really lacking any branches. It's more like a palm tree than an oak. It's hard to talk about the royal family without mentioning Princess Diana. Now, we're not going to outright say that Lady Di was killed on the Queen's orders, but on October 30th, 1995, Princess Diana made a statement to her attorney, Victor Michon, who made note of what was said during that meeting. Princess Diana wrote that reliable sources, whom she did not wish to name, had informed her that by April of 1996, whether in an accident in her car, such as a pre-prepared brake failure or by other means, efforts would be made if not to get rid of her, then at least to see that she was so injured or damaged she could be declared unbalanced. Some say that Princess Diana was killed because she had divorced Prince Charles and became romantically involved with Dodi Fayed. Allegedly, the royal family did not want to have a Muslim man anywhere near the crown, so they organized a traffic collision, and that's sort of how this particular version of the Princess Diana conspiracy theory plays out. Whether or not you believe it is entirely up to you, but the only issue is this level of racism actually tracks as far as the British royal family goes. The royal family is racist. We aren't even going to speculate or use language to caveat the accusation. The royal family is racist, full stop. The entire bloodline is whiter than the audience of a Weezer concert. That changed in 2018 when Prince Harry married Meghan Markle, a half-black actress from Los Angeles, California, who would become what many people believe is the first woman of color in the British royal lineage. This is more than likely false, as Queen Charlotte is thought to be of sub-Saharan African descent, but there really is no way to be certain due to the European tradition of whitewashing features in their paintings in the same way they have portrayed Jesus Christ for hundreds of years. Markle's marriage to Prince Henry apparently sparked a robust discussion about the skin color of their future children and whether or not it was going to be appropriate to have people of color in the British royal family tree. We don't know who said this, but we have a general idea as to whom it may have been. Prince Harry and Meghan came forward with the accusations against the royal family in 2021 when they spoke on the issue during an interview with Oprah Winfrey, where they revealed that the conversations were had amongst the royal family over how dark their child's skin would be. This must have been the most overprivileged and pompous version of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner ever conceived. So what did the queen have to say about all these allegations of racial microaggressions amongst her kin? Nothing. She never addressed it. She never spoke about it. She never even acknowledged it until enough pressure mounted for her to draft a meager 61-word response to the issue in which she called it concerning. 
Rather than publicly decry racism, racism like a decent evil. human being, the queen issued a blanket statement and said that they were going to be handling it from within their family. Nothing more has been said on the issue. There hasn't been a progress report. Nobody is speaking about it anymore. The royal family went right back to doing what they do best, which is wave and smile through a pained veneer of complacency while ignoring anything and everything that seems remotely difficult. This wasn't the only atrocity the royals tried to sweep under the rug in recent memory. By now, it's a well-known fact that Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, is an alleged pedophile. He apparently had sex with one minor back in 2001 and likely had sex with a lot more. He was friends with Jeffrey Epstein and was even thought to have been romantically involved with Ghislaine Maxwell at one point in time. News of these allegations first started surfacing in 2011, but you likely didn't hear too much about it because the royal family was was heavily invested in conducting damage control over the entire issue. Prince Andrew was first linked to Jeffrey Epstein back in 2011, and he was accused of sexual activity with a minor back in 2014. He spent five long years denying, dodging, gaslighting, and avoiding any and all accountability while exhausting every single legal option to prolong and delay the pending lawsuit filed against him. And who do you think was backing him every step of the way? The royal family. In 2019, Prince Andrew formally stepped away from his duties within the royal family over this entire endeavor, and in 2022, the Queen stripped him of all his military titles and ranks, but this is all pageantry done to protect the reputation of the royal family. These actions could have been taken at any given moment in time over the last 11 years, but they weren't. It was only when things seemed completely unavoidable that the royal family formally distanced themselves from the situation. Even after the supposed exile of Prince Andrew, he has still been seen engaging in secret nighttime meetings with the Queen in effort to avoid the paparazzi. So it's not like the royal family have officially cut ties with this guy. He keeps coming back, slinking around in the dark, hoping the paparazzi don't notice him. Even after a settlement of $12 million to his accuser, Prince Andrew denies the allegations and has failed to face any accountability whatsoever. This is largely because... The royal family is useless. They don't do anything, they don't control anything, they are only relevant to the public because of their lineage and attachment to Britain's extremely problematic history. Sure, the Queen will throw some kind of formal jubilee every year, make a public appearance to wave, smile, and say nothing of substance before retreating to her bed, but aside from that, the only thing she's excelled at is enabling racism, defending pedophilia, and maybe participating in the murder of her daughter-in-law. From the top down, the British royal family has proven to us time and time again that they are not people to be admired. If anything, we should be abhorring them. And at the same time, taking a good hard look at why we go through lengths to idolize people based on their family lineage instead of focusing on the merits of their actions as individuals. If actions truly speak louder than words, then what are the actions of the royal family actually saying? It's much shorter than a 61 word non-apology for being racist. It's that they are a bunch of cowardly, nihilistic narcissists who only take action when it's in the interest of preserving their reputation and never when it comes to doing the right thing. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching. You might see a couple of other links there in the player window. Feel free to click on those if you'd like to stick around. And thanks for watching here and how.